So, real quick. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I am a single person. I am one person. So, um, if you whatever you give me before the day of the review, I always get it back by the day of the review. Whatever you give to me on the day of the review or the day of the test, I'll get back when I can. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so I am. Uh, this past weekend, I worked on my Monday classes because Monday is the first thing I hit, and I was hoping last night and this morning to be able to work on my Tuesday classes. That didn't really go to plan. So uh, uh, I am hoping uh, my next priority is work on old homework for you guys. Uh, it's the next priority. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll get some graded homework back to you. And of course, this is stuff from like uh, the people that turn in stuff for the first test that. Um, uh, turn it on the day of the review or the day of the test. I don't think anybody's, I think one person's turned in stuff from like chapter three, if I remember correctly. Maybe some other people gave me some more stuff. Um, yeah, no, you, you did. Yeah. So if you got new, if you got chapter three stuff, my priority is always new homework. And then my old, my other thing is when I get time, I go back to the old homework. And normally for that, I grade the people who made lower grades on the test first. Is that, is that all right? Is that understood, I should say. Yeah. Um, okay. So is everybody, everybody should be very close to or finished with chapter three homework. Should be where you are. And if that's not true, just you can come see me. We can talk about getting you caught up, right? Um, and again, if you're not anywhere near there, you've got time until the test to turn it in. That's when it's due. One hmm? is the test? Yeah, one is the test. I put it on the homework sheet. Yeah, yeah, I put all the tests on the homework sheet. Yeah, yeah. One reason that I do that is so I don't have to carry it around up here because I got too much stuff up there already. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, So, I had a discussion with my other class. Uh, I think I've told you guys some of this stuff already. Um, this semester is really busy. Uh, I, I told you about the state bill that basically said we can't teach any media out. Did I tell you that they're trying to do the same thing to pre calculus? Wait, 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 wait. They're trying to wait. make it so we can't teach pre-calculus. So like, uh, so how are you supposed so, to so, 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 my only point for saying that is I'm teaching a lot. Plus, I'm attending many conferences. There's a, like a work group of teachers that are trying to push back against this legislation. And I do, I do not like that I'm not able to put as much into my classes as I normally am. I don't like that. So I, I feel bad that I don't have more homework graded. I do. So when you ask me for your homework, it kind of hits me. That doesn't help you out. So I'm going to make a concerted effort to try to catch up with some old homework for you guys. And any new homework you give me, I'm definitely going to give it back to you by the day of the review. Um, I just, yeah, I don't like not being uh, more up to date, but I physically, it's insane. I physically cannot keep up and work on this. And that means too much to me to not put any work into it. So, um, yes. So there's been workshops, there's been conferences, there's been uh, Zoom meetings discussing this legislation, discussing what we can do about it, discuss, and so like the chancellor's office telling us what we have to do, other teachers talking about what we could do, what other people have tried to do. Do you guys kind of follow? Um, you don't have to know all this, and I'm sorry that I'm putting throwing this all at you. Wondering if there's anything you can do with this. No, 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 you're fine. You just have to, no, just, you just, just have to be patient it. about homework and stuff. Are you supposed um, to do calculus? Huh? Are you supposed no, to do calculus? Oh, no, pre-calculus. That. Well, trust me, right now I'm teaching students in pre-calculus that know they need intermediate algebra, but we don't have it for them. So my big thing I keep telling people at the chancellor's office is, how can we keep calling ourselves community colleges if we're not giving what the community needs? That is false advertising. We have got to stop calling ourselves community college. That is false advertising. Because how many parents just want to come to community college and take intermediate algebra so they can help their students out? There's their kids, there's children out there, right? 
I, I know a lot of people have taken my intermediate algebra and they were just doing it. Oh, I can now I can help my my kid out when they get to algebra. I'm like, cool. Now we can't do that shit for them. And now they want to do that with pre-calculus. So the math department's been talking about creative approaches to a student taking calculus who maybe never took pre-calculus and we have to have a support course and try to teach them both at once and what can we do to make that work better and you guys don't have to know all this I'm sorry um, I just want you to know that I normally am much better at keeping up with things I've been pretty good about getting tests and quizzes graded pretty quickly um, but the homework is kind of another thing so I will work on the homework and uh, this Friday, I actually don't have any meetings, which is amazing. So I'm going to have a little bit more time. Um, anyway, uh, obviously I'll get the quiz back to you on Thursday. So you'll have that back. So, anything on homework before we jump into some new stuff? If you guys have not quite gotten into Chapter 4, you're okay. So if you're into 401, you're doing really well, right? It, and again, if you're behind on homework, just come see me. We can work something out to get you caught back up. Um, if we're, so as far as the homework goes, if we're like, because um, I find myself like struggling with the, uh, the textbook and the way they're formulating the questions. <clears throat> so what are we supposed to do? Like wait until the next day to go to math center and just review? I can homework just, at night. Yeah, and you can I, email me. You just seem like a sleeping type of guy. Huh? You don't seem like a type of guy that sleeps. <clears throat> No. Yeah. But you can email me. Uh, email is not the best way to try to tutor, but it's a lot more than zero, right? Um, if, it's, if it's a lot of the problems, that's bad. If it's every now and again a problem that doesn't make sense what they're asking. More than, I, more than sure. the email would help or the math center where nobody knows one through five except for more and pieces. Right. I don't know. So there's never going to be a perfect book which sucks. Um, and I'm trying to find, there's not a lot of like, I would really love to get an open resource book. I'm trying to get all my classes to be free textbooks. So right now, two of my classes, they, it's a free textbook they use. But they, there isn't any, really, for this class. Nobody's developed this uh, kind of book. Um, at least then, if it didn't make sense, you'd be like, okay, I paid nothing for this. So that makes sense. Um, in terms of how to interpret certain problems uh, if you really can't make sense of it. And again, it would only be an issue, a really big issue if it was like every other problem, right? I know sometimes they certainly aren't able to construct a sentence, bless you, really well in the homework. And then you can bring it up in class, right? So like when I say, are there questions from homework? Ask, say, this one, I, it's not even I didn't know what to do, I didn't know what they're asking. And then we'll talk about what they were asking, right? So every class I try to start with questions from homework. And trust me, if you have a question, at least 10 other people have the same question, right? So you could be their hero if, if just for one day. You could, you could speak up. So, you know, um, homework, there's a couple layers to it. You have to understand the concept, but then you have to understand what the author is asking you for. So, Different authors do a better job of putting sentences together. Um, this one's not the best sometimes, I agree. But if you have specific problems where it's just, I don't know what this is asking me, clarification on what they're asking you, I can do that all day. Um, and it's a relatively easy thing. If that's what you need, that's a relatively easy thing to do over email. It's just to clarify what the question is, right? So you can even send me an email and say, number 15, number 19, number 27, I don't know what they, huh? I would be emailing you all night. All right, so then I would reply whenever I could, yeah. It'd be crazy. Okay, um, does anyone have anything specific from homework that they have a question on? Okay. Um, Ramonda, do you, have, do you have one you want to bring up now that? Just for an example? Because sometimes it's... Uh, I feel like sometimes I feel like I'm the only one not getting a lot of it. No, no, no. And that's why I hey. hate a lot. If I ask people anonymous, anonymously right now, what's funny to me is a teacher. Okay, so I can talk to you guys as a teacher. You guys are teachers. 
What's funny to me as a teacher is I'll say, do you guys get it? And then every, I see people nodding their head yes. I know some of them should be saying no. But then I know that somebody's sitting out there and looking around like, everybody's shaking their head yes. Uh, a lot of them are lying for some reason. For some reason, they it's a social thing. They just want me to believe they're getting it, which is the silliest thing. Because I am the person that can help if they don't. <laughs> but if I don't know they're not getting it, I can't help. Does that make sense? So even if you think you're the only one that's not getting something, that is automatically false, trust me. If anybody else felt comfortable, they would say the exact same thing you just said. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, number nine. In which section? Uh, section 3.1, step eight. Okay. Oh, all right, all right. So remind me what a four-fact family is. So let me give us something to start with. If I said uh, 6 plus 5 equals 11, how do I do the other three parts? All right, so one of them, so it's really just this, Rondo. It's just how many ways can you reorganize this using addition or subtraction, right? When it has the basis, are we supposed to figure out? Oh, like the reason perfect. This is one reason why I gave that problem on the quiz is because there was a problem just like it. So let me do this. Um, oh, let's see if I can calculate something in my head real quick. Four base five plus uh, yeah, three base five equals uh, 12 base five. That's pretty skinny. Huh? That's pretty skinny. Sure. You're assuming it's right. I don't need to do shit in terms of calculations. They've done the work for me. The work is done. I'm sorry, I don't know why that's locked. So, the, it will be like accurate then? Uh, it. it will be accurate, like they've done that work? Yeah, they've done the work. Okay. The question isn't verify, the question isn't do this yourself. The question is, oh good, it is open, okay. Um, you gotta be really forceful with those doors. So listen, you guys, look, 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 look. Does anybody in here not know uh, what, uh, C minus B is, if I know this. If A plus B is C, what is C minus B? A. What base is C? What is C? Does it matter what C is? No. If A plus B is C, C minus B is A, correct? What's uh, B plus A? C, okay, right, right, right. No matter what the hell, what could A be? A could be for base five. What could B be? Three base five. What could C be? 12 base five. Those are things it could be. So what is three base five plus four base five? 12 base five. Because it comes too, right? You need it too. Yeah. What We're is- We're not worried about the number on the bottom. Like, you don't no, about yeah. I, I, so, because here, look, look, look. I need you to understand. A plus B equals C. Do you know what number A is? Do you know what number B is? Do you know what number C Could they be in base 117? Yeah, they totally could be. Why does it not matter? If I know that A plus B is C, I can immediately write three other things relative to that. That's it. There's no work to do. The work's been done. So you can take some kind of picture other than like A plus B equals C. You can be like triangle plus circle equals square. And then you sure, yeah, it doesn't matter what the symbols are. As long as I'm given a true statement, I can write other statements based on that. Yeah. The bases don't matter, but they do when you're trying to figure out the answer, though. Didn't they already figure out the answer? Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So this is not a base problem. They've already done the work. I'm just rewriting the work they did. Can anyone tell me what 12 base 5 minus 4 base 5, what must that be? Three. There's no work they already did. Do you guys see that? That is the idea of a four-fact family. The minute I know an addition statement is true, I can immediately write three other true statements. So given that this is true, what three more statements, what's the only statement I'm missing? 12 minus three. 12 base five minus three base five, what's that? Four base five. Four base five, okay good. So that is what a four-fact family is. It is everything that is implied by knowing this. Stop for a minute. Is that better? So that could be an example of when I talked about this, I didn't do a good enough job. 
but there's no way for me, no, 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 it's very possible. I didn't make a big enough deal out of what it was. I could have used more examples to really show what it was. But I don't know that until I get that kind of question, right? Okay. So any of these just go yip, yippee, whatever you want to say. Go with the gods. All right. So, uh, yeah, okay. I think you guys get that. No matter what this first statement is, I can immediately do that with very little thought because I, I know the relationships. And why is this useful? Because it sort of relates to missing at end. Right? If I want to do this minus this, and I know this plus this, then I automatically know this is the missing at end. What is 4 missing to become 12 in base 5 is missing 3 base 5. Right? Okay. Is that better? Yes. So that was, I know this book words things weird sometimes, for damn sure. Um, but that was more of just not really knowing what they were wanting you to do. And it was really just the idea of four-fact family. Yeah. Um, anything else? 22? What gates have opened? Uh, um, section 3, 1? Yes. Part B? Yes. Okay. 22. Okay. So this one says that if A plus C equals B plus C, then A equals B. Let me make sure I caught this, what they were saying. Yeah. And then they say, is this property true for all whole numbers? The, the weird thing, all right. The, why is this not true for all? Well, let's see. Well, if you think it isn't true for all whole numbers, can you give me a counterexample? Like 3 plus 4 equals 2 plus 3. No, careful. Doesn't equal wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop, stop. What did you just say C is? Can you put anything else here that's not three and have that still be true? So that's got to be a three, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. So does that mean that B's are equal? Mm -hmm. A equals B, if that's true, is the answer. I just kind of say again. Oh, I'm sorry. This is number twenty. Uh, twenty-two. Section three point one. Do you guys get the feel of this now? So this is a good example. I mean, this is a good thing. Uh, give yourself a specific example of what they're talking about. So if I have three plus four, so just to show you, if this equals, the only way I could write this so that C is still here, could this number be anything other than three to have this equality hold? Do you guys see that? The only number I could put there for that statement to still be true is three. Do you see that's what they're saying? Could these two not be equal? So if I have three plus four, let me make sure you guys are cool with this. Do you see how whatever number is here has to be the same number there, correct? Is that cool? Because they both have to be C. So if I put three plus four, I'm identifying C as four. So if I put a plus four there, is there anything else I could put here to make these true except for three? So do these have to be equal? So far it looks like they do, right? They have to be the same number. And actually I've kind of given you a way to think about this, right? This is a really good, so anytime you're trying to explore some vague abstract idea, give yourself some numbers just to get a feel for it, right? Is this better? I don't know, this is better. So, I mean, we all know the idea. If I just subtract C from both sides, I get A equals B. Hmm? Well, is that a whole number? Okay, then. It says this is true for all whole numbers. They all have to be whole numbers. Is there any whole number that this would not be true for? 
Yeah, so if I can imagine whatever I put, if I put anything, seven plus five, can I put anything else here except seven to make that true? Nope. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing you want to do when you hit that kind of problem. You want to give yourself some stuff to study. It's way abstract, so give yourself some concrete numbers to kind of get a feel for what they're doing. Um, let me see. Okay. Yeah. So I like it. They said if it's not true, give a counterexample, right? And the only counterexample that we could possibly consider would be not a whole number. So let's, let's do this. Um, I'm sensing we have a, a like a bad vibe right now in the room, okay? And I don't like it, um, but that's okay. I mean, sometimes it's gonna happen. As a math teacher, I very often do a lesson and students will I'll look out in the crowd and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I think you guys wanna hurt me, okay? Um, but we have a specific issue. Some of the homework problems don't make sense. You can ask me homework questions. If you feel like there's not enough, though, the idea is, what's interesting to me is, some of you will be doing homework, you'll feel like there's a lot you can't do, and there's just one thing you're missing, and all of a sudden you're able to do 20 of them. That happens so often in mathematics. So it can feel so overwhelming, but because you don't even know what you don't know, you feel like you're this far away from understanding when you're really just this far away from understanding. So you... Yeah, yeah, wow, I'm sure. Idiot, not yeah. I'm an idiot, but I was like, how did I not get that? Yeah, which is well, one I reason why. Him, yeah, 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 please, dear God, I totally get that. Like all the work comes which is, again, well. why I have office hours. It's why I leave space for questions. I mean, I know some of these, some of them are going to be hard just because the concept's weird and we're not used to it. Some of them are going to be hard because they worded it weird. I get that, right? Um, and I didn't purposefully try to find the weirdest worded problems and assign those, even if it feels that way. Um, okay. So, okay, okay, okay. So I need you to help me out. Uh, and as a teacher, this is where you're gonna feel my pain someday. We desperately need to know what is not getting across. So as a teacher, you're like, please, your God, ask me questions, because that helps me figure out what's not getting across, right? You guys with me? I can't, oh my God, if I could read minds, I don't know if I'd want to, but it would make my job a lot easier. Um, so I, I, I live off of questions. And like I told you guys, it is my job to make sure that we stay on pace. It's my job to stop the questions when I need to keep going. It's not your job to self-censor, right? I'll tell you, we gotta get going, you can see me after class or whatever, that's my job. Okay. Um, okay, anything else specific from, or general, from chapter three stuff? Yes? 3.3, um, set the question eight. That's very specific. Uh, let's see, I can almost read this. So does this say eight to the 15th divided by eight cubed? Mm -hmm. Get closer. Am I looking at the right one? Oh, I'm sorry. You no. meant number eight in set B? No. Okay. So that's the one that says write the following. It's 128 divided by 3 to the power of 3. Oh, part E. Okay. So 128. Two goes into 128, correct? So let's try to break 128 down into two to a power. So we should know some powers of two. Uh, what's two squared? Four. That's crazy. Two cubed. Two to the fourth. I just keep multiplying by two, right? 16. 16. Two to the fifth. 32. We just keep going. We're going to hit to 128 eventually. Double that, but again. Okay, double that again. Holy shit, so I can rewrite this as 
2 to the 7th divided by 2 to the 3rd, right? Is that cool? So I know you guys know a few powers of 2, but not all of them, because there's no reason for you to. You don't run into them that much. But you could take any number you're given and try to start breaking it down. You guys remember making prime factor trees, right? Okay. We're going to do that later this semester. <laughs> I don't get to hear somebody say that too often. Um, does that make, is that all right? So it's very different from the other problems because they just didn't give this to you factored. So the first step is factor that thing, right? Or you can build up to get there. You, to be able to do this problem, you know it's gotta be two to a power or else it wouldn't go with this. So you can just start building on two. Okay, okay. All right, anything else? I opened a bit of a floodgate there. You close the flight day? Okay. All right. Um, so, last time I think we introduced a few things. Let's kind of go over where we got to in section 4.1. Um, so, 4-1, I understand if 4-1 is, you know, mental mathematics, right? Doing stuff in your head. Uh, a lot of students don't like it. You're going to get students. One of the hardest students to work with in a math course is a student that never shows any work and says, I don't know what to do, I just do it in my head. That is, that is the worst thing as a teacher because if they make a mistake, I have no idea what they did. And also... There's something you could do to a problem, get the answer, but you got it for the wrong reason, and I'll never know, right, if I don't see the work. Um, but by the same token, you want students to be able to do some things in their head. Um, so we talked about, um, one thing I don't know if we talked about, actually, if I had to do this, Of course, I could just do it inside. But what's kind of nifty about distribution is there's a distributive property for just for I'm sorry, for division. There's a distributive property for division. What am I dividing by five in this problem? Yeah. So another way to look at it is I'm dividing both of these by five. So one way to do this is to do 15 divided by five plus 25 divided by five. So not surprisingly, this is called right distributivity of division. Right? And this is kind of related, how would I write this with a big ass division bar? What would go on top? And on the bottom, five. So is it this being divided by five? And this is being divided by five. Yeah. It's called right distributivity of division. And I'll show you why it's called right distributivity. This is because, because it only works on the right. So this will be 15 divided by 5 is 3, 25 divided by 5 is 5, and then you did 8. And of course, I understand, if you did this, you what's 15 plus 25? Uh, 40. 40. 40 divided by 5. So that is a property that exists. It is not always the most useful thing, but it sort of is useful in algebra, for example. If I have this, I'll often have somebody tell me the fours cancel and the answer is x plus eight, but that's not right because what's being divided by four? Yeah, and can I do what we did here? Can I add 4x and 8? What is 4x plus 8? 4x plus 8. Uh, yellow? I don't know what it is. Right, 4x plus 8. I have no idea what it is. But what's being divided by 4 is both of these, right? So I can do 4x divided by 4 plus 8 divided by 4, and then I get x plus 2. That's better. Is that right? That's really an example of this right distributivity. But it's if I don't write the long division bar, it actually looks like this just distributed. But if I write the long division bar, you guys can see what's kind of going on. 
let me stop for a minute. Okay. All right, so that's one thing I kind of uh, skipped over, I think. Yeah. We talked about compatible numbers. Compatible numbers are numbers like 4 and 6 because they make 10. Uh, 25 times 4 because they make 100, right? So it's the idea of compatible numbers. Uh, can somebody give me an example of compensation? We saw it earlier. Um, Taking one from one side and adding it? Yeah, so additive compensation is one example. Um, so I'm going to do additive compensation. So if I have uh, 199 plus 576, that's horrendous, but I can just make that. 200 plus 575, exactly. So you literally, this guy gives this guy one. And now that's a hell of a lot easier. I don't have to step it up and carry ones and so forth till I go insane. What's that? The, uh, the 775. Yeah. Okay. All right, I like it, I like it. So that was the idea of compensation. You could have multiplicative compensation. So if I had 25 times 48, you could set that up, that'd be kind of a problem, you know, you have to carry whatever and so forth. Or what's compatible with 25 multiplicatively? 25 times 5. Sure, it's 5 times 5, but what do I multiply 25 by to make it a nice number that's easy to multiply something else by? 4, yeah. So if I take a 4 from this guy, what's left? So yeah, if I take a four out of this guy, what's left? What does he have left? Twelve. Twelve. Does everybody pull that? Okay, so you Forty-eight is four times twelve. But then what's twenty-five times four? Hundred. And what's hundred times twelve? Twelve hundred. That's a hell of a lot easier problem than that, but they are the same problem. Is that all right? So those are two examples of compensation. One's additive, one's comparable, one's multiplicative, but they're the same idea. Just take something from one guy and give it to the other. Um, we talked about left to right methods, which is kind of funny. Um, I mean, that one would be something like if I wanted to do four times 125, I do four times 100 plus four times 20 plus four times five. So it's really just distributions. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything we had. Yeah, okay. So the next topic, besides these, the next topic is estimation. Right, trying to estimate the answer. So the next topic is going to be, I don't really necessarily need the right answer, I just need an estimate of what the answer is. So let me erase this, you guys ready? Can anyone, uh, let's see. Less and less nowadays, we're in situations where we necessarily need to estimate things. So uh, I'm one of the few people that was upset when instant change counters came out. Because <laughs> that was one place people actually got practice using numbers was getting change. Um, and now it just plops out. Um, somewhere that people need to estimate used to be like waiters and waitresses. You want to estimate what the tip is going to be so you can know how much somebody stiffed you if they do, right? But now that's basically included on most receipts, so everybody knows exactly what they should give. Um, but we still should know how to estimate things. So for example, if I wanted to estimate 407 times uh, 53, I want to estimate that. And what that really means is make this become something that's going to have close to the right answer that I can do in my head. That's really what estimation should be. Can I get this rewritten so I get an answer in my head that's close enough? Yeah, so 
I could, go ahead, huh? 40,000. Sorry? Yeah, how did you do it? What did you do? 400 times 50. All right, 400 times 50, I love it. So you get 20, and then you add one, two, three zeros. It gets. Now can anyone tell me, is that estimation too high or too low? Too low. Too low, because I took each number down. I love it. What's something else I could do instead? I could do 400 times 60, right? So now I'm taking one down, the other one up. It should sort of maybe average out, and then I get 24,000. Can somebody do that in your calculator? What do you get when you multiply those together? 21 plus 21571. Okay, so it's closer to that. I like it. You guys kind of with me? So that's that's very basic estimation of numbers. You just make them round. Uh, inherent in this is one thing this book doesn't talk about. It is generally better if you take round one piece down to round the other one up when you're multiplying or adding just because the two effects will kind of cancel each other out. In this specific problem, those are so close to 453 that this actually came out to be a little closer, I guess. Am I with you? Okay, I like it, I like it. Okay, so we know a little bit about estimation. Um, what about if I do um, 23.79 divided by, I know decimals don't exist, but you bet, uh, divided by uh, 3.91. I want to estimate that. Yeah, yeah. Now, with division, does it make sense that I, if I round one up, I want to round the other one up also? So, for example, what is uh, 10 divided by 4? I'm sorry, let me do one. 10 divided by 2? 5. What's 20 divided by 4? 5. So, if I, if I make the top and bottom both go up, the division will come out roughly the same. In this case, they're exactly the same because I made them both go up by a factor of two. Is that, is that all right? I guess I'm with you. So addition and multiplication, if one goes up, I want the other one to go down. Subtraction and division, if one goes up, I want the other one to also go up and vice versa. We already know this, by the way. Remember how I do, like, um, what do you got, Jeff? Uh, 102 minus uh, 69. Can I take this down by three and take this down by three? And that's a lot easier. I don't have to carry it off the borrow. I don't have to do any of that stuff. Remember that? So that was the idea of like equal additions. Yes. Because you're trying to get the same like difference in distance. Yeah, yeah. Subtraction. If I make one number go down, the other number's got to go down to keep the difference the same, to keep the distance between them the same. Exactly. I love it. That okay. is equal additions, right? Equal additions, yeah. Um, okay, so this would be approximately 24 divided by 4, which is 6. The actual answer is 6.0. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, maybe. So what's funny to me is the book doesn't really address what I just said, where if you multiply and add, you want to move them in opposite directions. So let's look at what the book actually talks about. So what's really good for today, this is a really good topic for today, we're all a little bummed out, and what we're about to talk about is boring as hell. So that, I think, is going to help. And in fact, we're so bummed up, you don't end laugh at my joke. Um, so <laughs> if I want to, so some of the basic ways I can estimate um, things beyond what we just talked about. So one of them is sort of related to what the first problem we did up here. Um, it's called range estimation. So if I, for example, I have, uh, it doesn't matter what it is, Jeff, 349 plus 261. Range estimation would do this. It rounds both of the numbers down. That's the low end. And then it rounds both of the numbers up. So I get a range of answers. So of course the low end would be 300 plus 200. And the high would be what? Yeah, 
400 plus 300. You guys kind of with me? Nothing too amazing there, but. And then a really smart thing to do, if I get the range estimate, what's the smart thing to do to get close to the right answer? What can I do with these? Um, yeah, if I average them, yeah, exactly. So my guess, and so you, the book just kind of leaves it as a range, 500 to 700, but we can say our guess <laughs> is 600. Yes? Why couldn't you, for like, Say the higher the low end, why didn't you just round those to like 350 and 250? This one is um, much less granular. This is a very low resolution. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we're going to get into some higher resolution stuff here in a minute. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense. So I'm just looking at the first number. In fact, if you want to see, what if I had this? Um, 411 plus uh, 51 plus, um, not even that, let's say 31 plus uh, 387. So the low estimate would be 400 plus 0 plus 300. And the high estimate would be 500 plus 100. Plus four hundred. Guys, we're pushing them as far as we can. This is the way it's done. Okay. So this is one way to estimate things, and then if I take the average of those two, I get a semi-decent answer for the estimate. Um, then we get a little more specific. Now I can do the same thing with multiplication. So if I had like 187 times 27, what would the low estimate be? 100 times 20. What would the high estimate be? 200 times 30. 6,000. And then it can be like average them if we wanted to be a decent estimate. Yeah. Whenever we're, <clears throat> excuse me, whenever we're average, I mean, uh, estimating the low and the high, we're going down to the nearest 100th, 10th, or 21st. Like yeah, kind of like based on, um, uh, yeah, well, on this one, you don't, when I'm multiplying, I don't want to take this down to zero because then it would just make right, it zero. Right, right. So, but addition, I can kind of base it on hundreds or thousands or whatever the most of the numbers are. Yeah. Kind of like this. So this one, it looks like it down to zero? Yeah, just like we did here. Okay. Yeah. I Does it make sense for multiplication? I'm not going to take it down to zero? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Or be zero. Um, okay. Then you've got something that is only going to make you like me better. Uh, and yes, that's sarcastic. Uh, it's called one column, two column. Uh, <laughs> one column, two column, red fish, blue fish. Uh, front end estimation. We've already done one column estimation. And this like the low estimation. It's just another way to do the low. So one column, if I have like 3,194 plus 5,762, one column literally means the first digit, the first column, right? If I were to line these up, the three and the five would be in the first column, correct? So that's what that, literally refers to. So I would just do 3,000 plus 5,000. Which is equivalent to what I would get for the low end range estimate, right? Two column means exactly what it sounds like. So this would be one column. If I do two column... There was a question like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
if I do two column, I'm going to do 3,100 plus 5,700. Literally just, if I line them up, I'll take the numbers that are in the first two columns. Everything else can pick up zero. So this would be 8,800. And of course, that's a better estimate. Today, that's even better having that in the back. Um, okay, okay. Blah, 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 blah. So, real quick, I noticed that some students sort of have lost touch with what rounding means. So, the, the next kind of idea is related to rounding things. Um, so, if I have uh, Talk about rounding for just a minute. I have 4,259, and I'll round this to the tens place. What would that be? 4260s? Yeah, I love it. Cool. It gets a little weirder when you introduce decimals. I'm not going to do it right now because we're not officially decimals. Um, what about, what about, okay, what about this? What if I had three, four, Four nine, and I want to round it to the hundreds place. The hundreds place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirty-four hundred. Now, I have some students that'll say that nine makes that a five, and then that five makes that a five. You guys see that? You, you understand the logic? There is logic there. It's incorrect. So one big thing about any teacher, I don't care what discipline you're teaching, you need to try to figure out what the student was thinking. And very often that is not easy. But this I see all the time. And this, it, there's a logic there. But this isn't dominoes. The only thing I look at, and I don't mean pizza, the only thing I look at is the next number over. I don't worry about what's after that, right? Okay, I like it. Because again, what's the real important idea? Is 3449 closer to 3400 or is it closer to 3500? Well, it's closer to 3400, exactly. So if I follow the steps, that's the answer I'm going to get. 3400. Cool. I like it. Okay, okay. That was a quick little side note. Um, oh, uh, yeah, that comes up here. I like it. Um, So when I hit something like this, this isn't really rounding, but it's kind of an idea we did earlier. This is called rounding to compatible numbers. So it's a type of rounding. We're taking some liberties with the word rounding. Just so you guys can see this. 37 is almost. 40. And what number would 40 go with that this is close to? 40. 45. 25. Yeah, because 25 times 4 is, is easy, right? So if I make this go a little bit up to 40, I can make this go down a little bit to 25. Right? And I can put the little symbol that means approximately. Okay. And of course, what's this? 25 times 4 is? Hundred, and then you add zero. zero. Cool. And anytime you want to, when you're doing these kind of problems, you can just plop that in the calculator, figure out what the hell it is. Right? If the actual answer is eighteen thousand, and you're saying it's one hundred eighty, something went wrong. Right. So it's not a bad idea to actually just check what that number is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So about the calculators, funny. Um, most of you guys, some of you guys have the TI calculator, some of you guys have the Casio, the little, um, there's that, you can actually do like 200 functions or something silly, it's insane. All right, so you got a TI calculator. Um, so let me talk about the calculator just for a little bit. I use both kinds.
There we go. So if you've got this little dude here, scientific calculator, we're talking about that first. A couple things. I think I already pointed this out before because we got to the exponent, and this is your little exponent button. I call it the to the button. Seven. So I do seven to the fifth power. Shabam! Let me turn you off, little dude. There we go. Okay. Yeah, let's go full. Oh, is there still a link? There we go. Okay. How's that? Is that all right? Yeah. Do you guys see that all right? Yeah. A um, couple things. If I wanted to, let me get some paper. If I wanted to put this problem into the calculator, what do I have to be careful about? Let's see. I want to put this problem in 4 minus uh, 2 times 5 over 3 squared plus 11. And make sure your parentheses are right. Say again? You got to make sure you're, like, your parentheses are right. Yeah, okay, okay. More words. So this problem, gosh, I really can't get this to work well. Okay. This problem has hidden parentheses. We don't need them because we're humans. I know the top has to be done before the bottom, but the calculator has no idea. So if I put this problem into the calculator like four minus two times five divided by three squared plus 11, it is not gonna do right. Oh God, can you see that? No. Too many Jeebus. All right, let's see. How about we is this better or worse? That's worse. That's a little better. Oh, we see there it. There it is. All right. Okay. Yeah, I know. I'm not sure. Maybe I should turn this off. Turn this off. How's that? Okay, hold on. So if I do this, what's the only thing I'm going to divide by? I'm going to divide just by the 3 squared, but I'm supposed to divide this whole number by this whole number. So I have to put, and this is why your calculator has parentheses. I've got to put parentheses to tell it what the top is. Divided by parentheses to tell it what the bottom is. Oops. Kabang. Cool. If you put it in there, hopefully you get the negative 0.3. Okay. You guys all with me? Now, some of you guys have um, TI calculators. And your to the button looks exactly the same. It's just in a different place, of course. Um, Of course, it's a little easier to see because it's backlit. Ooh, it'll show off. It's an expensive one. Yeah, I know. Excuse me. Uh, there's your little to the button right there. But I would input this the same way. I would say 4 minus 2 times 5 divided by 3. And if I wanted to, there's my little to the button, or I've got a squared button on this also. 3 squared plus 11. Come back. You don't. You recharge it. Oh, it's got a little port. Yay! Okay. And this is TARDIS blue. Okay. All right. Cool. So just a couple things to know. And one little thing about either one of these. This one I haven't done this in forever. But but there's a cool little button at the bottom here. Do any of you have this little stow button? Now, if you borrowed it from me, you do. On the TI calculator, you also have a stow button. Short for store. So I can store whatever number I'm working with, I can store it in memory. So if I hit the little store button, I can pick a memory location. So now A holds that answer. And let's see if I can remember how to get to that. That's a really, oh, memory variable, there we go. So if I want to do eight times A, I can get to it. Mm. Now on the TI calculator, there is a very nifty little store button. And there's also a very nifty little variable button so I can store it directly in X and then I can do stuff to it. So if I want to do seven times that number, kabam. 
So memory locations are good. Now I'm obviously not gonna to spend too much time on this because I'm hoping that most of you get into grades where you're not using the, the calculator much, right? Um, maybe like seventh, eighth, ninth grade, they're gonna start using the calculator more, but I would hope below that they're not using the calculator too much, um, is my hope. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I wanna say about that. Casio one? Say again. The Casio. Casio. Casio's pretty good. So this one's a, these are both TIs. We are beholden to TI to some degree. Um, that was the other thing I want to say. One last thing, one last thing. Oh yeah, that's right. So when you put stuff into this calculator, either one of these two, it understands order of operations. So the old adage about garbage in, garbage out. If you put something in, it's going to calculate what you put in. So if we're not careful about what we ask it to do, it's going to give us something else possibly besides what we want. So we got to be careful about, we got to know MDOTs well enough to put it in correctly. OK, OK. That's really all I want to say about the calculators. Anytime you're using the calculator and you have a question, you can feel free to ask me. Um, but I'm not going to spend a ton of time on those. Okay. Yeah, um, it's not a bad idea. Oh, poor little dude, probably out of battery almost. Now I think you, most of you probably, are any of you gonna take another math course after this? Yeah. Are you taking statistics maybe? I think it's one, two, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. So I don't mean another elementary course, I'm sorry. I mean like uh, 160 or something. I'm, I'm almost certain most of us in here are done with our other math stuff. Yeah? Huh? It shouldn't be anymore. No, no, no. Okay, so some people that take this course, to be honest, I get people that take this course that have taken calculus before, and they're going to take out two next or whatever. That's happened before. I didn't know if any, if any of you were going to take Math 160 or math something else, then I would say you should get a calculator of your own so you can get used to it. With me, if you don't have a calculator of your own, um, yeah. But I think most of you guys are definitely going to go into 126, 128, correct? Are you going to 126? Do I teach 126? Yeah. Not at the moment. I'm hoping I'm going to teach it soon. Yeah, next semester. It would be, it would be a shame to keep All right. switching. Well, this is really making me feel better because I felt like. I had alienated everybody from no, this quiz. Really I love the way you teach. Oh. Yeah, you're, yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. So next semester, yeah, I'm next semester. not, because we already picked courses. Oh. Uh, sorry. I think we already went through this, didn't we? I think Probably. We already talked about this. I remember. <laughs> uh, I think it's Carrie Lee. I'm trying to get one of my colleagues, Sierra Rawlings. Do any, any of you know Sierra? She expressed interest in teaching this class, and we desperately need more people because Carrie's about to retire. I'm over fifty, you know. You are. What? <laughs> Wait, we we went through this. I know you're over this. We what? went through this. No, but like... My God. Okay. 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 All right. I'm still. I, nothing's happened to me that suddenly made me change age. I haven't been hit by any rays that I know of, so I'm still fifty-one. I'm going to be fifty-two in September. I'm gonna finally be playing with a full deck. It's my, it's my. Uh, September what? I kind of miss being 42 because that was the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Oh yeah. Huh? September what? 21st. So I have a whole song about my birthday. I love it. You're a boy Do you remember? There it is. Okay. Okay. So coming back to this exciting business. Um, uh, let's see. I want to do a couple more things. I let's see. Should I? No. <laughs> yes. Too bad. Too bad. I was thinking about whether or not. I think next time the first thing I'm going to do is going to show you several videos. Um, yeah, she'll do. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's okay. <laughs> you might want to be free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take it out of context. I don't know. So, so real quick, 
Uh, I, I want to show you one example. And the unfortunate thing about these manipulatives is we actually don't have enough base 10 pieces for everybody to do this. So I'm going to show this to you on the overhead. So we're just going to do like two more things, okay? And I think my camera can only handle two more things. Poor little dude's almost out of juice. So I know. I'll get it. I have. I, anyway. So. What's that? Yeah, I actually borrowed one of my students once one day when I was really just about to completely go away. All right, guys. So I want to show you. I want to show you one problem with base ten pieces. I don't remember why we don't have more of these. I put in a request for them, but apparently it's not very high on the list of priorities. Oh, let me turn this back on. All right, so very quickly. Um, next time we're going to see videos. We're going to work some more with this because I want to show you a couple things. I want to show you how do you show multiplication with these things? This is kind of funky. Addition, we kind of know. I made you guys do some addition problems with like the base three pieces. Um, so, can somebody tell me what number? Let me lay this out. What number is that? Well, it's base ten. Yeah, it's base ten. So this is our base. Yeah. So pretty cool. That this is all. This is a hundred. Yes, these are a hundred little 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 dudes. So this would be one hundred thirty six. Okay. So if I wanted to add that to the last problem we're doing for today, okay? Gonna give you guys a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, but I want to add that to 281. I want to add those together. I would just put 200. So now I'm going to, we're going to get out. Oh, I'm as well as it can be. Get up here. There we go. Okay. 200 and 80, Jeff. Why the shit did you do that? Oh. I wasn't I was I don't know. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I don't remember. 81. There we go. Okay, so there's 281. So you know next time we're going to see a video, and there's going to be a little person doing exactly this, right? Yep. What idea is going to come out of what I'm about to do? And we've actually seen this. I'm pretty sure I've already shown you some videos where this happened. So you can see this is going to be, the answer is going to have a 7, correct? Yeah. Here's 8 and here's 3. So, of course, what happens? You clear the one. Yeah, it becomes another 100. These go away because they basically went over here. So then I get the answer 400. 17. I like it. And, of course, you see 417. So, again, this is a very... This is weird. If I would ask you the first day, how do you physically show somebody carry the one? I would understand if nobody really knew how to do that. But this is a physical representation of how we, or why we carry the one. Are you guys with me? I'm pretty sure we saw a video with this already. I'm not sure under what context. Um, okay. So next time we'll talk about how to show multiplication with these things. We're gonna, so just to kind of tell you where we're going, we're working on what's called algorithms for certain things. And they, what's an algorithm? They, they're very often people think of this in terms of computer science. Anybody know what an algorithm is? The way things are made up for an outcome. Yeah. The way something is made up for an outcome. Uh, okay, I like it. So you can think of it as a set of instructions. Yeah. A set of processes, right? So an algorithm could be, so we're gonna create, we have to create the addition algorithm that we use, and we're going to do it in steps. So we're going to have an intermediate algorithm that kind of leads up to our basic addition algorithm. Same thing for multiplication, same thing for division. Sounds a little less boring than rounding, uh, but we'll see what you guys yeah, think. The mountain. The mountain? Yeah, it's like, either That's enough, enough, guys. You guys can go. The mountain of spaghetti with the meatball on top, you put the meatball where the number is and which way it rolls. That's what I thought you were going at. No, it's like, I, I learned it here. Wait, no, not all. Oh, yeah, um, really, I it's like, 
Don't forget your IDs, please, dear God. Thanks, man. Like you put the meatballs here at like six, it would roll down. Oh yeah, okay. That's what I'm talking about. But what about five? Oh, it's like five. Five is like oh, you, you secretly push it that way. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. Well, it does make sense that five would just stay the same. Well, the real. Right, yeah. well, well, I like that. I hadn't really thought about that. Perfect for like first graders. Yeah, it's never heard of. It's a yeah, it's a check in the box. But no. So you guys, what's up? Definitely got that question wrong on the test. Is it uh, the base one? Yeah. Okay. You were hovering over me and I didn't realize. I'm sorry. No, 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 it's okay. I didn't mind that. I just got embarrassed because I, I felt like I was doing it wrong. And I think you confirmed it for me. I was just trying to tell if you're on the right track, because then I can figure out if I want to give you more time or not. You know what I mean? Was I wrong? Uh. Now I can't remember what I was thinking when I was watching you. Um, you told you said that's why I was looking to you tell. You did a little too much. Yeah, you did a little too much. Um, but which problem was it? Four on mine. Uh, can you find yourself uh, yes. while I kind of pack up? It's right the second one. Ah, okay. Yeah, we're all four. Uh, oh yeah, because you, like you were. Okay, so that's eight, uh, yeah, and then this one, you were trying to actually work it out, but of course, if nine, 15 plus eight, 15 is 12, 15, eight, 15 plus nine, 15 is also 12. So we didn't even have to huh? that. If nine plus eight, base 15 is 12, base 15, then <gasps> eight plus nine, that's, and that's the only, that's, that's Oh it. no, but I got the right answer though. You did, okay. but you were doing too much. I didn't, I wasn't asking to do like the base work at yeah. all. It was just turn it around, commutativity, so, yeah. So I didn't really mean for that one to be like, I didn't yeah, construct I think, it thinking, you know, the it's ones, gonna be I a lot to it. Right now, where we're, I mean, let me speak for myself. Where when I see bases, immediately I go into like, like I need to figure that shit out. I got you. So. But I could have made it like A plus W equals L and asked the same kind of questions, but I was just trying to bring back some base ideas. Just to show you that bases could show up whenever they want to. Um, yeah, I was kind of caught off 